you want to start to feel happy, it starts with you wanting to feel happy. We like to sit and dwell. We like to sit in our own sadness. Make sure you're spending time every single day, whether it's 15, 20 minutes, whether it's an hour, two hours, take time to fail. On the other hand, if you expect to win, you will win. And he's right, because doctors and psychologists both alike, they agree that worrying actually does shorten your life and it does damage your body. We need to clear our thinking before we go to sleep. We're talking about a book that Norman Vincent Peale wrote, The Power of Positive Thinking. Let's kick this off with golden nugget number one, creating your own inner happiness. That you are responsible for your own happiness. Because unhappiness is usually the byproduct of you thinking sad thoughts, you having these negative feelings, you having resentment towards others, and just having an overall crappy outlook on life. So if you think those things, what do you think is going to happen? You have to force yourself to not think those negative thoughts. Peel says we have to get into the happiness habit by thinking upbeat, cheery thoughts throughout the day. We like to sit and dwell. We like to sit in our own sadness. I don't like to do that, but I just know that sometimes my brain forces me to do that. And I don't know why. So I have to force myself to not do that. I have to put on an upbeat music. I have to go do something productive. I have to get in the gym. I have to go hang around friends that are going to make me laugh. And it's tough. At first, it doesn't feel right. It feels like you're forcing it because you are forcing it. But eventually, it starts to make you feel better. There are miracles happening all around you. There is beauty all around you. Open your eyes and look. Can you see the sun shining? Great. Can you hear the birds chirping? Great. Can you feel the warmth of the sun on your skin? Awesome. There's simple beauties all around us. If you want to start to feel happy, it starts with you wanting to feel happy. So short circuit those negative thoughts. And when you start to feel bad, when you start to find yourself gossiping, feeling guilty, feeling angry, feeling whatever it is you're feeling that's negative, turn that around. Force yourself to think positively, do positive things. And while it doesn't feel right at first, keep going. You're on the right path. Golden nugget number two, the antidote to anxiety. Is that people waste a lot of their time, a lot of their energy, fuming and fretting about things that they cannot control. Go back to Covey's principle. Circle of concern, circle of influence. Focus only on those things in the circle of influence. Everything else in the circle of concern, you can't control. You can't affect that. So move on. Don't allow your mind to just spend time in that space. You're wasting your mind's energy. So as part of this antidote to anxiety, Peel says that we need to slow down to relieve our anxiety and to attain peace. And he suggests meditation. He suggests that we devote at least 15 minutes daily to calming and relaxing ourselves by thinking peaceful thoughts or not thinking anything at all. So something he shares in the book is to help get rid of the tendency to worry and get angry, we need to relax and spend a few minutes thinking about beautiful, peaceful settings hearing the birds chirping, feeling the sun on our face, all these things that I was talking about before, where it's just a matter of you actually thinking that in your mind. Wherever you are, if you're at work, if you're in your house, it doesn't end, or close your eyes and open your mind to maybe a place where you were on vacation before. Then go there for 15 minutes. Smell the smells. Feel what the sand feels like on your feet. Feel yourself plunging into the ocean. So the antidote to anxiety, it's all about clearing your mind. However you choose to do that, make sure you're spending time every single day, whether it's 15, 20 minutes, whether it's an hour, two hours, if you're working out of the gym, whether you're doing yoga, whether you're going to cycling class, whatever, take time to allow your mind separation from the stresses of your day. Golden nugget number three, expect the best. If you expect to fail, you will fail. On the other hand, if you expect to win, you will win. So, what seeds are you planting in your mind? Are you planting seeds of positivity or seeds of negativity? Guess what? Your life is going to give you back more of that. Are you planting seeds of, oh, doubt, and, oh, I'm not going to make this work, or something bad is going to happen? If you're planting seeds of that, guess what you're going to get? More of that. 
Start focusing on the positive. Start focusing on how things can go right. And guess what? When things go wrong, say, hmm, there's a lesson in that for me. Because life doesn't happen to me, it happens for me. So everything that's happening is there to teach me a lesson. This isn't a setback, it's a set up. This thing that's really bad, it happened for a reason. I'm gonna learn from it and I'm gonna get better. Golden nugget number four, worry not. And he's right, because doctors and psychologists both alike, they agree that worrying actually does shorten your life. And it does damage your body. We need to clear our thinking before we go to sleep. And we need to imagine our worries flowing out of our body like water out of a glass. So don't think that my path is the right path. No, no, no. This path is good for me. I replaced worry with hope by putting together goals. I put together three goals, a financial related goal, a health related goal, and a professional related goal. Something that, what I was gonna do with my life. And back in the day when I was going through those stresses, I was worrying a lot, a lot. I was having a tough time sleeping, I was having chest pains, my heart was palpitating all the time. And I really just could not get, you know, a high level of satisfaction in life. And you know, if you were saying on a scale of one to eight, Ryan, again, nines and tens are reserved for very special times in our lives that seldom happen. I was sitting at a four consistently where I would wake up and I'd all of a sudden feel the stresses of the day. I would pass between three and four all the time. So what I did was to replace that worry, that anxiety, that fear. I built myself a plan that gave me hope, goals that gave me hope, something that got me excited, something that I wanted to work towards, something I wanted to achieve because I knew that if I did, it would get me out of this mess and my life would be better as a result. Goal the nugget number five, problem solving. I had problems that I needed solutions to. I had desires, I had wants, I had dreams, I had goals that I needed a solution to. The, the crap show was a solution. Create Your Eight was a solution. But what I did need to do was take myself out of the busyness of the day and allow my mind to sort of free up and look for inspiration all around me. And know that whatever solution I'm looking for, it's going to come to me. And this is where in this golden nugget in the book where Peel talks about, you know, problem solving, he gives us 10 problem solving techniques, which many of them I believe with. The first one, believe that for every problem, there is a solution. So yes, believe that your problem can be solved. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's difficult. Yes, you don't have a solution right now, but there is a solution. And oftentimes there's more than one. Two, try to maintain your serenity as you address a problem. So don't feel anxious. Don't try to don't try to to get angry and say, ah, you know, I'm not getting this. I don't understand. No, you need to be calm. You need to be hopeful that there's going to be a solution to this problem. Number three, don't try to force an answer. Or don't try to say like, oh my God, I need an answer by Saturday at noon. If I don't get it by Saturday at noon, then it's too late. Sometimes you can't force it. Life often happens for you. And so you just need time for that to reveal itself to you. Number four, gather all relevant information. Pretty simple. Do as much research as possible. Number five, write down all facts about the situation. Again, get understanding for the problem, what's going on. You need to get clarity on the problem so you can get clear on what solutions you need to solve it. Number six, spend time praying about the issue you are confronting. Listen, if you're praying about it, that's fine. If you're not praying about it, maybe you're thinking about it. Always make time to think about it. When you're walking in nature, yes, take time to think in nature and, and allow your mind to flow. But when you separate yourself from the stresses, the anxieties, the busyness of the day, allow your time to think about solutions. Number seven, believe in and seek God's guidance on the promise of the 73rd Psalm. Thou wilt guide me by thy counsel. Um, if, again, if you believe in the religious aspect of that, that will talk to you. That necessarily doesn't talk to me. Um, so I, I maybe won't be using that one. Number eight, rely on your inner gifts of insight and intuition. There's things that we believe we should do, and then there's things that we know we should be doing. So you gotta listen to yourself, and it takes time, it takes, it does take time, it takes patience, it takes some maturity for you to realize what you're great at. And sometimes you're doing something just to make a living, just because it's my job, it's my career, it's what I believe I'm great at. But you have other gifts within you that maybe you're not exploring yet, that you should be. Number nine, attend religious services where you can and listen peacefully and let your subconscious work on the problem. Again, you can go to church or you can just go for walks. I love going for walks, period. I'll put music on my ears and allow myself to think. 
pretty simple. Number 10, the answer that develops in your mind or comes to pass is the right answer. So I just allowed the thoughts that came in my mind. Whenever I had a thought, an inspired thought, I wrote it down on my phone. Pulled up my phone, opened up the notepad, and just wrote it down. At the end of the day, I would think about it, ponder on it, say, you know what? This idea is something I want to go further into and dig deeper into that. That's exactly how this show happened. That's exactly how Create Your Aid happened. It's exactly how you're going to find solutions to your problems. Last but not least, golden nugget number six, how to handle heartache. Now, everybody at some point in their life experiences heartache and it's tough. And so Peel says that for us to get over heartache, we need to resist the heartache by staying busy. So if you're getting a divorce from your husband or your wife, if you just broke up with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, if you just lost a loved one, if a loved one passed away, a friend, a family member, doesn't matter who it is. He says that in order for you to get through it, you need to stay busy. You need to return to your normal activities as soon as possible after a loss or a defeat. And you need to resist the temptation to brood and feel sorry for yourself. I got to get back to work. I got to get back to my goals, get back in the gym, get back to eating right, get back to hanging out with my friends, my family, listen to the music that I was listening to. We have to return to life. But sometimes we just have to be sad and we have to work our way through it. But the key here is to not allow your mind to dwell on it for too long. That's not handling heartache. That's allowing heartache to take control of you and to win.